so we have started the classification of nadirians and we have studied two system or two ways for classifying nadirians the first system was that they classified all the nadirians into two subphylum and those subphylum was subphylum medusozoa and subphylum entozoa but this type of classification system was not used frequently and another system of classification for the nadirians came into know and that was uh, they classified all the nadirians into five classes and among those five classes the first one class is class hydrozoa so now we will discuss class hydrozoa in detail in class hydrozoa this is the outline for the class hydrozoa we will first uh, discuss the whole origin introduction then we will have some general characteristic of class hydrozoa which uh, is which uh, dis distinguish it from other classes and then we will we will enlist some the important member of class hydrozoa and among those important member we will study cobelia geniculata hydra and this one in detail so first of all come to all the world origin of hydrozoa so hydrozoa is derived from two greek word the word hydrozoa is derived from two greek words that is hydra and zoes so hydra stands for water and zoes you know it stands for animal so the word hydrozoa is derived from two greek word that is hydra and zoes hydra stands for water and zoes mean animal so this was the whole mythology of hydrozoa now we will discuss some the some of the introduction of, of class hydrozoa so this class hydrozoa is the most primitive class it is the most primitive class of phylum nadiria which means that their species the species consisting in this class hydrozoa they are more primitive and they are the first nadirians so that's why we can call this class hydrozoa as the primitive class this class comprising of 2750 plus species so this class consists of 2750 plus species and majority of these species are marine for example physelia and another we have obelia beside a marine there are also some species which lives in the fresh water and the fresh water are the most a common example is hydra and another one we have tubularia so this was a small introduction to the class hydrozoa that it is the most primitive class which means that it consists of the most primitive species of phylum nadiria and it consists of 2750 plus species uh, they lives in marine water majority of their species they lives in marine water but there are also some freshwater species for example hydra and tubularia now we will discuss some of the general characteristic of class hydrozoa so we will discuss general characteristic so if you remember we have seen that nadirians are diploblastic which means that their body wall will be composed of two layers and we have discussed those layers that the first one is epidermis which is ectodermal in nature and it lies outside and the second one was gastrodermis which was endodermal in nature and it was lined by cilindra so for example this is a hydra this is a hydra and this black one is the epidermis so this one is epidermis and this blue one will be the gastrodermis if you remember we have done the body wall of nadirians and polyp form we have discussed the types of cell present in the epidermis and we have discussed almost six types of cell in the epidermis among those six type of cell the important and common type was nidocyte 
So you must know that epidermal of nadines consists of more than six types of cell. And among those six types of cell, the first, the first and the most common type of cell is nidocyte. Nidocyte is a cell which consists of nematocyst. So nidocyte are nematocyst bearing cells. So here in the case of class hydrozoa, so we know that this nidocyte may be present in epidermis and it also present in the gastrodermis depending upon the species. So here in the case of class hydrozoa, majority of the class hydrozoa member will have nidocyte present only in the epidermis. So we know that this nidocyte can be both in epidermis and gastrodermis but here in the case of class hydrozoa this nidocyte will be only present in the epidermis region. So this is the first uh, important feature of class hydrozoa. Another feature we have that their gametes or gonads will be their gonads will also be epidermal. For the structure of gonad I am drawing a jellyfish. We know that this is the X umbrella surface and the inner surface is called sub umbrella surface. So I have drawn only the inner surface. This is the this one is the X umbrella and this one is sub umbrella. If I get a cross section of um, a medusa form, I will get so this is the outer surface, outer convex surface which we call X umbrella surface, and this one is the sub umbrella surface. We know that both the X umbrella and sub umbrella surface have epidermis and gastrodermis. So this red one will be the gastrodermis. It is, will be also present in the sub umbrella surface. And this green one will be the epidermis. So here it will also be present in the sub umbrella surface. So I have written over here that gonads will be epidermal in nature. So this this is the epidermis or sub umbrella, or this is the epidermis of medusa, and here will be gonads. And this medusa is male gonad. If this is male, this medusa is male, there will be male gonads, and if this is female, there will be female gonads. So in this gonads, what will happen? there will be gametes for example I am drawing this male so we have seen that in the class hydrozoa the gonads will be only epidermal in nature so here you can see this green one is epidermis and the gonads are present only in the epidermis they have epidermal nature so this is another character of class hydrozoa that will they will have gonads which are present in the epidermal region Another character similar to this one is that gametes will not enter to gastrovascular cavity. So you can see here that this is cylindron or gastrovascular cavity and these are these are gametes. So these gametes are present in the gonads. What will happen that they will do not enter into the cylindron but whenever they are releasing they will be released directly to the outside so they will be released directly to the outside water they will do not enter into the cylindron so this is the another character of class hydrozoa we have another character in the class hydrozoa that is mesoglia so we have done the mesoglia that what is mesoglia mesoglia is actually present in between the epidermis and gastrodermis we have seen that in between epidermis so this black one is the epidermis and this blue one is the gastrodermis uh, we have seen that in the diploblastic uh, animals there are epidermis and gastrodermis and between the epidermis and gastrodermis there is mesoglia so here in the case of a mesoglia we can trace Mesenchyma cell and among those cells the one type is amoebite cells 
So in the mesoglia, generally in the mesoglia of nadirin, there are mesenchyma cell and amoebae cell. But here in the case of class hydrozoa, this mesoglia will be acellular, which means that there will be no amoebae cells. Uh, amoebae cells are actually they are irregular in structure and they help in the transport of food and nutrients they are uh, usually they present in the mesoglia but here in the case of class hydrozoa th these amoebae cells will be absent in the mesoglia and this mesoglia will be acellular which means that there, there will be no cells in the mesoglia so this was another character of class hydrozoa next character is that we know that in all nadirins their life cycle have two different morphological form we have discussed each one in detail and that is polyp form and medusa form so if you observe the life cycle of a typical nadirin for example uh, a polyp form will first of all we will have a polyp form and that polyp form will convert into a medusa form by the process of budding and that medusa will convert again into polyp form uh, after fertilization so if you see the life cycle of an adherent, there will you will see two different morphological forms in their life cycle. The first one is polyp form and the other one is polyp. First one is polyp form and the other one is medusa form. So here in the case of class hydrozoa, majority of the species shows polyp form with dominant. So in case of class hydrozoa, the polyp form will be dominant, which means that they will uh, remain for the long time. And the medusa form is also present over there, but the medusa form is for very short uh, time, and the polyp form remains for the long time. And this is dominant in class hydrozoa. This is the important feature of class hydrozoa, in which the polyp form is predominant. And the medusa of class hydrozoa is called Hydro Medusa. Beside these characteristics, there they are majority. They are they form colonies. So majority of our class hydrozoa member they form colonies, and we will discuss this colony in detail and Ovidia geniculata and Pycelia. So the individuals they combine together and they form colony and this uh, phenomena, we will discuss this phenomena in Ovidia geniculata and Pycelia. So this was all about the general characteristic of uh, glass hydrozoa. Uh, first of all we have discussed that medocytes are the special cells which consist of nematocysts and here in the case of glass hydrozoa, these nematocysts will be present only in the epidermis region so for example this black one is the epidermis and this inner one is the gastrodermis so in case of class hydrozoa this uh, nematocytes or nematocyst bearing cell will be present only in the epidermal or epidermal region and the gonads will also be epidermal so for example this is this green one is the epidermis in the subumbrella part here the gonads will be only present in the epidermal region here you can see that this red one is the gastrodermis. There are no gonads present in this gastrodermis, but the gonads are present only in the epidermis region. Beside this, we have studied that gonads consist of gametes, and these gametes will not enter into the gastrovascular cavity. Here you can see that this is cylindron, this is the gastrovascular cavity, and whenever these gametes are mature and they are and the time of their releasing come. So they will do not enter into this cylindron, but they will uh, expel outside directly without entering into the cylindron. So in other classes, we will see that this gamete will enter first into the cylindron, and from the cylindron, it will expel out by the menobrum and mouth region. But here in the case of class hydrozoa, these gametes do not enter into the cylindron, but they uh, expel outside directly to the water. Uh, next, we have studied that mesoglia is a uh, uh, a jelly like substance which is present in the in between the epidermis and gastrodermis this one is mesoglia so here in the case of class hydrozoa 
This mesoglobin will have no unbiased cell, which means that they will be acellular. Next, we have studied that all neurons follow a phenomena which we call dimorphism, and which there are two biomorphological forms in their life cycle. So, if we study a uh, life cycle of um, nadirin, we will see two different morphological forms. The first one will be the medusa, and the second one will be the polyp. So, two different morphological forms do exist in the life cycle of an adherent, and this phenomena is called dimorphism. So, here in the case of class hydrozoa, if you, if you study the life cycle of class hydrozoa, you will see this polyp form will, this will be predominant, and it will remain for the long time. And next, we have also seen that in the class hydrozoa, there will be also medusa form, but this medusa form is for very short time. And this medusa is in case of class hydrozoa, it is known as hydromedusa. Next, we have studied that majority of the species of class hydrozoa they form colony, which means that individuals combine together and they form they lives in a colony. So this colony, we will discuss this colony in detail in Obelia geniculata. So now come to all the enlisting of some important important member. So we know that in the class hydrozoa there are approximately uh, 2750 plus species but we will have only but we will enlist only some of the important and common species for example important important members although there are more than 2750 species but we will only enlist the important one and the most common one among those is the first one is Hydra which is a fresh water and we have another species that is Tribularia then we have Physalia which is commonly known as Portuguese men of war and then we have Obelia Geniculata then we have Gonio Gonionimus so if you remember and we have studied in the class hydrozoa general characteristic that majority of the hydrozoans they have a polyp dominant form but here this, in, this, in case of this species there is exception here in this species, there is Medusa dominant phase. So Medusa is dominant over here. But majority of the class hydrozoa members, they will have polyp dominant. So these are some of the important and common members of class hydrozoa. Now we will study the Obelia geniculata.